Hey y'all, once again, welcome back to the layout. Today we have another layout update for you, so just a couple new things to show you. Uh, the biggest one definitely being the new rotary dumper. We actually ripped out the old one, and I have my friend Grayson here with me today who's helping us design and build the new one along with my dad. So together, the three of us are trying to get this thing together. And I just want to show you a quick update on um, how that's coming along. Also a couple new locomotives and engines that we have on the layout. So that being said, let's get started. I'm actually with my friend Grayson here. You may have heard his name before. He's done a lot of work on the layout. A lot of the signals and electrical components on the layout have been designed and built by him. And he's helping us out with the rotary dumper as well. So Grayson's here. We have a little schematic of the track. That's the long line in the center and the rotary dumper. But Grayson, tell us a little bit about what we're doing and how this rotary dumper is going to work. Yeah, Josh. So this is basically your dad's idea for how this dumper is going to work. Um, so this, this presents kind of an interesting challenge on your layout because there's not a whole lot of room to do a full drive-through dumper. Um, so what your dad came up with is he said, okay, let's put the track on an incline. Let's use gravity to be our friend. So where that's kind of led us to is if you look here, this is your track coming into the dumper. This is the dumper itself, and this is the outside of the dumper. So right before the dumper, you'll have a section of track that's controlled by a servo. What that track can do is it can lift up and down just enough to where it can uncouple the coal car. So what you'll do in operation is you'll pull that coal car directly where the coupler is in this joint here. When this track lifts up, gravity is going to cause that car to roll down into this dumper where it's going to hit this brake that's going to be actuated by another servo. Okay. Once it clears this sensor here, you're going to have a clamp that's another servo controlled um, clamp is going to come down, grab the car, and then once everything's in position, you'll have another uh, servo that rotates the dumper around to dump the coal and then brings it back to home. And once that's done, the brake releases, the clamp releases, car rolls out, and you have two more sensors here that are actually going to check for that and uh, confirm that the cycle's complete. So what we've done here is um, I've got a small test bed set up. So we're using an Arduino Mega microcontroller here for this. And I went with the Mega over the Arduino Uno, if you're familiar with them, just because I needed the extra uh, inputs and outputs for all this stuff. So if you understood the schematic, go ahead. The coolest thing about all this is it all works with the touch of one button. So all that stuff he explained happens automatically as you, once you press the button, then you just watch it do its thing. Right, so if you uh, reference back to the schematic, basically here's your servo that controls the lift track this is your clamping servo, and this is your brake servo. And then this guy right here is what will actually rotate the dumper. Um, so again, a lot of this presented kind of a unique challenge, but it was interesting to uh, put it all together. And then if we come over here, this is your first IR sensor at the entry of the dumper. This is the one that's directly behind the brake that'll be at the exit of the dumper. And this one is on the stationary track just outside of the exit of the dumper. You can reference that back here by IR1, 2, and 3. Then of course we've got an LED indicator light to let you know exactly what's going on with the system. It can display um, if you have a fault in the system, tell you the exact status. Got another red LED here that will be for the operator so they know when that track is lifted up not to move their train. And then of course an LCD display to give you more information about what's going on. Okay, so like Josh was saying, all this is automatic. Um, all you have to do is press a button and it's going to run through all of its functions. Um, so the first thing you'll get when you first turn on the system, you have to initialize everything. So I'll do that now. So these three go to their home positions. This is going to rotate the dumper slowly back to home until it hits a limit switch to home itself. And I'll mimic that limit, limit switch here. Get as close to home as I can. And then you'll get that flashing green while it initializes and the steady green tells you it's ready, which is also shown on your LCD display. So at this point, the dumper is ready to run, so what you would do is you would take your train, you'd shove it, um, like I was saying earlier, so that that last coal car you want to go into the dumper, its coupler is positioned just above that joint in the lift track section. So you'll go ahead and press the button to start, brake, track lifts, and you see there it says waiting for car. So what's going to happen is that car is going to roll in, it's going to pass IR sensor number one, and then once it clears it, it knows it's in position. It'll go ahead and lower the track, clamp the car, and dump the coal. And that would simulate right there the rotary dumper rotating as it dumps the coal. Correct. And then back to the home position. So once we're home, we release the brake, 
we unclamp the car and we get an indicator light to let our operator know that the sequence is done just in case the car didn't roll out on its own they could reach in there and push it out that's the little flashing yellow in the back which turned to a green there. correct and then once the car rolls out clears the sensors you get a green and it's ready to go again several days later so here we are underneath the layout and uh, we actually have a little power box here which controls everything we have a computer chip and I just want to let Grayson take a quick moment to share a little bit about how this is set up and this is really the brains behind the uh, rotary dumper here. Yeah, so you feed your 120 AC in here and drop the screwdriver on the ground there. Um, but basically we're running an Arduino Mega and that's basically controlling everything. So it's running all the motors and looking at the sensors and whatnot. Um, and then there's a power supply in here as well that kind of powers everything. But, um, you know, putting this box up under the layout, we're able to run uh, some multi-conductor cables, just Cat6 Ethernet um, up above to where the dumper is. And then you can make your all, all your power connections and um, motor connections, sensors, and all that other good stuff. So the box is here underneath the lower level. Coming up is the coal mine scene and then the upper level. And under here is the terminal board and all the connections. Right, Grayson? Yep. So, um, like we were saying down below, um, you have your three uh, Ethernet cables here that are for your inputs and outputs on your Arduino. So that'll be, again, your motors and sensors. Um, and then we've got a power distribution board because um, everything has to have power supplied to it. And then on the fascia, um, we mounted this real nice little button here um, that can actually display uh, red, red, green, blue color combinations. Um, and then next to it, there'll be a little LCD display that'll actually give you, um, you know, different things that are going on with the dumper. It'll tell you if there's an issue or, um, you know, kind of what the status is of it at any given time. Yeah, and this is the button that operators will push to actually operate the rotary dumper. And then you think about all of this, and Grayson's done all the programming, I'll show you that in a minute here, um, all the code that's behind it. But you push one button, and the car will automatically... Um, uncouple from the train, roll into the dumper, it'll dump, and then it'll roll out. So there's a lot, little bit more that goes into it. Um, you know, there's different routines that are programmed in, but um, as you can see, there's some of the different color combinations that it can make. So. so a steady green light means that it's ready to dump. So if you were to push it, um, what would happen is a little section of track there would lift up, it would uncouple the loaded coal car from the rest of the train, which you've shoved in. Um, if you look, the whole thing's actually on a gradual decline, so it'll roll into the dumper. So you can see there, it would lift it up. On the right there, it'll uncouple from the train because it lifts up. It'll roll into the dumper. The Arduino, the power supply, will then rotate the dumper automatically after a couple of clamps and brakes go on to hold the car in place. It'll then rotate back to the normal position. The brakes and clamps will release. And then when that happens, the car will continue to roll on the decline until it hits a bumper there. We can unload about five cars at a time. And then once that's done, we'll pull them out and then put the next five cars in and continue until we've unloaded the whole coal train. So that's what's coming. We've been working on it. My dad's been doing all the work here on the physical model. And Grayson's been doing all the electronics. As you can see, a lot of wires. There's IR sensors built into this thing and lots going on. Um, so it's almost done, a little work in progress, but we'll get there. So we're up here on the upper level. This is the town of Canton and the paper mill here modeled after the prototype paper mill in Canton. And out of Canton ran a local to Asheville called P31. And we always loved chasing it because it had three or four SD40-2s. And that's something we, we really wanted to model. So I finally finished everything and got a nice quartet of SD40-2s. These are all scale trains. Um, the front one is a custom painted BNSF unit. This is a stock engine, and if you look close in between all of them, you'll actually see MU cables. They're magnetic and you can hook them up uh, based on how they're arranged. You just have to install the little magnets onto the engines. Um, this is an X Norfolk and Western SD40-2. Again, that's a scale trains. And then we have a high fit SD40-2, um, which is also a scale trains. And both of these were custom painted as well. And the reason that I swapped out some of the Intermountains for scale trains wasn't because I necessarily like them better, but I think they just run a little bit better when you have all four of the same engines, the exact same decoders, um, the same brands, and everything just runs a little bit smoother. All the details are the same. So maybe it was a little bit nitpicky, but I thought it would be neat to um, just have all four of the same type of engines. A couple other locomotives that I'm working on are actually a couple Overland engines. I really don't have too many of these, but I've got a pretty good deal on two of them. And... Um, 
figured I'd pick up a little bit of Union Pacific power. I lived in Chicago for a while and always loved seeing the AC 4400s on cold trains. So I uh, picked up two of these. I'm in the process of weathering them. I'm actually filming a complete how-to video um, for both of these. So something I thought I'd share. I've got quite a ways to go, but I got the basic fading done and then the road grime as well. And then one neat thing there, if you can look at it, I actually opened up the door and installed a prime mover inside of it. So you can actually see I uh, folded the door in half and put the little graphics on it. And then inside as well, it's a 3D printed FDL 16 prime mover, uh, which I installed inside. So something neat that I've always wanted to do and I've actually never been able to do um, because of how the locomotives are designed in plastic. But with Overland, there's quite a bit of room and especially in the big AC 6000, um, there's, there's quite a bit of room to put detail inside of it. So that's what I did. And then I put the drive shaft through the middle of the uh, FDL 16 prime mover in there. So it, it worked out pretty well. The, the motor itself is actually here. The drive shaft runs to the trucks back here and it just ran it through the model there. So um, neat little detail there I've always wanted to do and finally making it happen. So nice set of Union Pacific power there as well. And we'll take a look at a couple other engines I have coming up. So I wanted to show you guys a couple more engines, and that's probably most of what this update's going to be because that's most of what we've got done on the layout. Um, but here are a couple four-axle engines. This is actually a B32-8, even though they're gone on the prototype. I wanted to keep it just because I um, really thought they were neat-looking engines. So I finally put sound in that. I also finished this GP60, which I put sound into. Um, and so that's done. A couple more yard engines there, and then a couple more engines here as well. This is a Scale Trains Dash 9. I actually filmed a how-to video for it, so they'll be posting that on their channel pretty soon. I kind of just shared a little bit with them how to how to weather one of their engines, so you can be on the lookout for that. And then here's one of ours as well, which I recently weathered. Um, and again, it's just a Scale Trains Dash 9. Pretty stock from the factory. I updated the sounds. Um, and then the last thing here is... Uh, an Athern Illinois Terminal ST70 ACE. We've had this one for a while again, but I recently installed lock sound and then re-weathered it to make it look like the prototype. We noticed ours was looking just a little bit clean. So um, a lot of these have custom sounds. I've actually been doing a lot of custom sounds lately, but um, I'll save that for a, a locomotive roster update, and I'll let you listen to all the sounds there instead of taking your time during the uh, layout update video. So really down here in the lower level and even on the upper level, there's not too much new as far as scenery goes. Um, one thing that we have gotten but have not started yet are actually trees for the peninsula. So if you look here, we have a lot of trees. And I've been talking about this for a long time, and I know a couple of you guys have asked. And it's coming. It's just uh, it's one of those things that's a huge project, a huge undertaking. We started it up there. And a little bit right there, but we have trees to fill in all around here. So we just bought, I think, 2,000 trees or 1,000 trees or something like that. And then uh, we have quite a bit of work ahead of us to make all these and put them in. So I know I've been saying it for a while, but now that we have the trees, I actually think it's coming soon. So that'll be coming soon. And then a couple other scenery updates as well. And then a big one being the rotary dumper. Real excited to show that to you guys. So once again, guys, thanks for watching. I think that wraps up, wraps up this tour. It's a pretty quick one, but I will keep you updated, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.